اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم Assessing discriminant validity. How do we assess a discriminant validity using smart PLS if we are using covariance based structural equation modeling technique? Discriminant validity. Discriminant validity or divergent validity refers to the degree to which the measures that should not be very highly correlated with each other are actually distinct. Now, we use discriminant validity to establish distinctiveness of constructs. Now, in social sciences or survey-based research, the constructs may overlap. Now, in order to be sure that these constructs are actually different from each other, we try to establish discriminant validity. Now, discriminant validity indicates the extent to which the, a given construct differs from the other constructs in the study. Now, there are multiple measures in a research study. The constructs shall have their own distinct identity and there shall be no overlapping. Now, in order to statistically ascertain the individuality of constructs, discriminant validity is addressed. Now, discriminant validity can be assessed using Farnell and Locker criterion, the traditional measure, and the new criterion that is heterotrate monotrate ratio. Now, each of these methods are now discussed in detail. Fornell and Locker criterion. Now, Fornell and Locker in 1981 proposed that a traditional metric and suggested that each constructs AVE, that is, square, that is the average variance extracted, should be compared to the interest construct correlation of the same construct with all the other reflectively measured constructs in the model and the shared variance between all model construct should not be larger than the AVE. So within construct variance must be higher than the shared variance. In simple terms, the square root of AVE for the construct must be higher than its correlation with all the other constructs in the study. In short, Farnell and Locker suggest that the AVE, that is the square root of AVE or average variance extracted, should be greater than the variance between the construct and the other constructs in the model, that is the squared correlation between the two constructs. So either you take the square root of AVE or you square your correlation. Do not do both. So this is how you establish Fornell and Locker criterion. Thus, the square root of AVE of each latent variable should be greater than its correlation with any other latent variable in the assessment, that is in your research study. Now, how to do that in Smart PLS when using CBSCM model? So, let me run it, calculate basic CBSCM algorithm. So, I've got three constructs here and run it. Now, here are your results and we are in interested in discriminant validity and we are interested in formal and locker criteria. Now, look at this. Let me zoom in. So I've got three constructs here. So this is 0 0.740. What is this 0 0.740 at the intersection of CC? And this is the square root of AVE. Let's have a look here. Point five four eight. So if you take the square root of 0.548, you will get 0 0.740. And this 0 0.740, which is the square root of AVE for CC, must be higher than the correlation of CC with all the other constructs in the study. So all the other constructs are in the study are the rest of these two, OC and OP. So CC is greater than this and this value here. So CC, the square root of AVE for CC is greater than the correlation of CC with OC and CC with OP. So there is no issue here. Now look at this, OC. This is the square root of AVE for OC. Is it greater than the correlation of OC with all the other constructs in the study, OC with OP? But what about the correlation of OC with CC? It's here. So you have to compare this value on the left and at the bottom. So here, OP, the square root of AVE for OP is 0.824. Is it greater than its correlation with all the other constructs in the study? Yes, it is because the correlations are on the left now. So the correlation of OC and OP is this. The correlation of CC and OP is this. And this value here is greater. Now, hence, 
discriminant validity based on Fornell and Locker criterion is established. Moving on, heterotrait monotrait ratio. While Fornell and Locker criterion or the recommendation of examining share variance to address discriminant validity has been extremely popular in the past. Recent research has started to question how sensitive this test is in capturing discriminant validity issues between the constructs. Now, subsequently, we've got heterotrate monotrate ratio of correlation technique that was offered and it is a better approach to determine the discriminant validity between the constructs. The HTMT method examines the ratio between trait correlations to within trait correlation of the two constructs. Putting it another way, it examines the correlation of indicators across constructs to the correlation of indicators within the construct. Hence, it is heterotrait monotrait ratio. This is the modern approach and according to Hensler and others, this is referred to as heterotrait monotrait ratio of correlations. And if the HDMT value is less than 0 0.90, the screen validity has been established between the two reflective constructs. Now, how do we check it? Let's go back. Now, in order to assess the HDMT in the discriminant validity, click HDMT and look at this. The ratio of correlation between CC and OC is less than 0 0.90, so discriminant validity is established. Ratio of correlation between CC and OP is less than 0 0.90, so discriminant validity is established. Ratio of correlation between CC and OP is less than 0 0.90, so discriminant validity is established. Obviously, there is no ratio here because it's the same construct. OC to OC, CC to CC, OP to OP, it will definitely be one. So there is no comparison here. It is between different constructs. Now, based on these two tests, we can say that our model has no issue of discriminant validity and that our constructs are distinct. So this is how you can use Smart PLS when using the CBSCM to determine to establish your discriminant validity. Thank you very much.